Hey y'all, welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. I have another lab for you. We're gonna create a solubility curve for potassium nitrate in water. This is going to involve solutions. Now remember a solution has two parts, a solute and a solvent. The solute is being dissolved and it's in a lesser amount. The solvent is doing the dissolving and so it's in a greater amount. Our solute is going to be potassium nitrate. Our solvent is going to be water. We're gonna be creating our solubility curve by putting different controlled amounts of potassium nitrate in test tubes of water. We're gonna heat them up to make everything dissolve, then we're gonna slowly cool it down. And when crystallization takes place, we're going to know that's the temperature that the max amount of solute will dissolve. That's the amount to make a saturated solution. We're gonna do that for several different amounts and get several different temperatures. Then we're gonna plot that on a graph and the result is going to be a solubility curve. We use solubility curves to describe the solubility of the solute at different temperatures in a certain amount of water. Make sure you go get your supplies first. You're gonna need something to write with, something to write on, and you're probably going to need a periodic table. Okay, y'all, let's get started. Why does oil and vinegar salad dressing have two separate layers? When making hot chocolate, how does stirring affect the rate of solvation? How is the solubility of sugar and water affected by increasing the temperature? What does the phrase like dissolves like mean? How is solubility expressed? Make sure you give the units. What's the difference between a saturated and unsaturated solution? Using a marking pencil, number four test tubes and place them into a test tube rack. Using a balance to measure the potassium nitrate, prepare the test tubes as indicated below. In the first test tube, you're gonna put two grams of potassium nitrate with five milliliters of distilled water. And then you can see test tube two has four grams, test tube three has six grams, and test tube four, eight grams, all in five milliliters of distilled water. Okay guys, I've got all of my supplies that I need for this first part. I need to measure out two grams, four grams, six grams, eight grams of potassium nitrate. I've got my test tubes labeled. I've got my potassium nitrate, my scale, water, graduated cylinder. Okay, I'm gonna do that right quick. Fill a beaker about three-fourths full of tap water. Place the water bath on the wire gauze on the ring clamp and test tube number one to the utility clamp, firmly attached. Heat the water to 90 degrees Celsius and then adjust the flame to maintain this temperature. Let me show you what that looks like. Stir the potassium nitrate water mixture in the test tube with a glass stirring rod until the potassium nitrate is completely dissolved. It has to be completely dissolved. There can't be any particles in the bottom. Loosen the clamp. Using a test tube holder, remove the test tube. Y'all, I didn't use a test tube holder. Repeat step five for test tube number two. While 
placing the thermometer into the solution in test tube number one. Hold the test tube up to the light and watch for the first signs of crystallization in the solution. Record the temperature immediately when we see that. Put that in your data table as the crystallization begins. Repeat step five and six for all four test tubes. Record the temperature in the data table immediately as crystallization begins. Repeat steps five and six for all four test tubes. Okay, y'all, next we want to convert the mass per 5 milliliter ratio to mass per 100 milliliter ratio. Let me show you how to do the first one. Okay, so we had 2 grams for 5 milliliters. And I'm wanting to know how many grams per 100 milliliters. A couple of different things you could think about. We could cross multiply and divide, so we would have 200 divided by 5, 
which is 40. Or we could think, what did we multiply times 5 to get 100? Well, you'd multiply that by 20. And so then 2 times, again, 40. So instead of having 2 grams per 5 milliliters, we are going to have 40 grams per 100 milliliters. You're going to need these numbers because these are the numbers we're going to plot on our graph. So make sure you do this exact same calculation for the 4 grams, 6 grams, and 8 grams. Okay, so now we're ready to plot your data on a graph. Make sure you're using some graph paper. On the x-axis, we're going to put the temperature that crystallization occurred in degrees Celsius. On the y-axis, you're going to put the mass of solute per 100 grams. Now, I know we just calculated 100 milliliters. 100 milliliters of water weighs 100 grams. One gram of water equals one milliliter of water. You can use them interchangeably. Construct a solubility curve by connecting the plotted points on your graph with a best fit curve. Don't forget to label the X and Y axis. And guys, give it a title too. Make sure you're using a straight line edge when you make your X and Y axis also, please. Okay, y'all, I'm gonna give you the first point that goes on your graph. So put your first point at 13 grams per 100 milliliters of water at zero degrees Celsius. Now you're going to graph all of your data points that you just converted to grams of solute per 100 milliliters of water. Okay, y'all, you know there's gotta be post-lab questions. Make sure you use your graph that you just created to answer these questions. How does the solubility of potassium nitrate change as the temperature rises? Explain at the molecular level why this relationship exists between temperature and solubility. How many grams of potassium nitrate can be dissolved in 100 milliliters of water at 50 degrees Celsius and then at 70 degrees Celsius? What is the change in solubility from 30 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius in grams of solute per 100 milliliters of water? Y'all remember, that's just the unit of the y-axis. Will 60 grams of potassium nitrate completely dissolve in 100 grams of water at 40 degrees Celsius under normal conditions? Make sure and explain your answer. Don't just give me a yes or a no. Okay, y'all, these are the instructions for the next few questions. Determine if each solution is saturated or unsaturated. If it is saturated, determine how many grams of potassium nitrate would be on the bottom of the test tube. We're going to assume that there is no supersaturated solutions. If it is unsaturated, determine how many grams of potassium nitrate must be added to make a saturated solution. 110 grams of potassium nitrate in 100 grams of water at 40 degrees Celsius. Was this saturated or unsaturated? How many grams is needed to be saturated? If it's saturated, how many is excess? How much is at the bottom of the test tube? Okay, with 10 grams of potassium nitrate in 100 grams of water at 60 degrees Celsius, is this solution saturated or unsaturated? How many grams are needed? How many grams are in excess? What about 60 grams of potassium nitrate in 100 grams of water at 70 degrees Celsius? Saturated, unsaturated, grams needed to be saturated, grams in excess at the bottom of the test tube. Okay, y'all, last one. 140 grams of potassium nitrate in 100 grams of water at 60 degrees Celsius. Is this saturated or unsaturated? How many grams are needed? How many grams are in excess? Well guys, that's all I have. I hope you enjoyed the lab. I also hope you learned a little bit about solubility and how solubility curves are created. Until next time, bye y'all.